Okay, okay. Game na pre. Okay. Other, there are different types of renewable energy sources. First one would be hydroelectric. Second is the wind. Next is the biomass. Next is the solar. Next is recycling. And then waves, nuclear, tidal, and geothermal. So next point. Oh, oh. So what we discussed today is the solar power. And how do solar power plants work? Solar power plants use the sun. It has two main types. The photovoltaic power plant, which is the type uses energy from the sun and convert it into electricity using a solar cell. Next is the solar thermal system, which is utilize the energy from the sun to heat to fluid to high temperature which does this fluid then transfer it into heat to water, which then becomes superheated steam. The, the pressure from the steam causes the turbine to turn. So your photovoltaic does is directly na, ano, yung mismo energy from the sun. And the solar thermal would be, ano, may siya conversion na mangyayari from solar to high heat to steam that will turn the turbines. So next. So these are some largest photovoltaic power stations. First would be the Badla Solar Park in India, which has a capacity of 2,245 megawatts and 5,700 hectares, which is built in year 2020. Next is Wangai Hydropower Goldmood Solar Park in China. That has a capacity of 2,200 megawatts. And it was built also in 2020. Then the Pafagada Solar Park in India, which has a capacity of 2,050. And the land size would be 5,300 hectares and was built in 2019. The next would be the Ben Ban Solar Park in Egypt. That has a capacity of 1,650 megawatts. With the land size of yes, with the land size of three thousand seven hundred now. Then the Bad Badla Solar Park in India, which has a total capacity of two thousand two hundred forty five megawatts, consisting of more than ten million solar panels. India's Badla Solar Park is the largest solar power park in the world. Badla Solar Park is located in Badla, a dry and sandy region in Rajasthan and spans 5,700 hectares with an SMS investing rising to 100 million or 1.3 billion US dollars. <laughs> okay. The solar power plant in the Philippines. It is the Kalatagan solar farm in a 63.3 megawatt solar power plant that in Kalatagan, Batangas, owned by Solar Philippines. And it was reported that the groundbreaking for the solar facility was done early, as early as March in 2015. Uh, solar Philippines, a local company, developed the project, which cost 5.7 billion. The facility was built by 2,500 people in a 160 hectares land near the foot of Mount San Iro. Upon its completion, the solar farm has 200,000 panels. The new majority loan of funds of the project cost was shouldered by the Philippine Bank Business Bank. In Banco de Oro, China Bank, Comerance also provided funds. And by the end of February, the Calataga Solar Farm is already generating power speaks before the deadline set by the Department of Energy in March 15, 2016. Next. So how do solar cell works? Cellar, solar cell looks like. So we have the black and the blue. So next. How do solar cell works? To answer this question, let us first study the components of the solar cell. So in this 
part daw ng solar cell is meron siya aluminum frame tempered glass escapos scap solar solar cells scapulan ulit then back sheet and the junction box next so ito yung same din ng ano same solar cell next How do solar cells work? Let's us start the first thing that is happening inside the solar cell when sunlight strikes. So for the maximum efficiency to occur, the solar panel must absorb as many energy as it can from the sun. The more energy it absorbs, the more energy it can supply. So yung maximum efficiency daw, para, ma pagka, para makakuha tayo maximum, maximum efficiency, kailangan daw mas maraming sunlight na makuha, mas maganda. Mas maraming supply yun ng energy. Next. Here's the thing. Somewhere around 5% of the energy from the sun is already lost due to reflection once it hits the glass. Which is on the top layer. So, mabuwasan daw ng at least 5% yun. Sige, next. To avoid further losses, the sun's energy upon entering the glass this is where the anti-reflecting coating comes into play. So after daw ng isang ng glass, meron siyang nilalagay na anti-reflection coating. Next. Oh, so this is the scenario to avoid to prevent losses due to reflection. This happens when the coating is incorrect. So makikita man natin is yung unang yung mga yung unang ray na to, yung nasa kaliwa, is nag-bounce siya and yung pangalawa nag nag-stay lang siya. Pero meron tayo nakita na reflection na nangyari dun nung nag-meet yung dalawa. So, ganito rin mangyayari pagka incorrect yung paglagay ng coating natin. Next. So, with the right amount of coating, the reflected energy can be minimized if not totally cancelled. So, ito, makikita natin, nag-cross din siya pero hindi siya nag-bounce palabas. Means, meron siyang right amount of coating. Next. So the anti-reflection coating lets the light in, but mostly it doesn't let the light to be reject, reflected out. It also makes some of the reflected light get back. Certain manipulation is being done during manufacturing to achieve that characteristics. So, masabi natin kung mara, same with sunglasses. Di ba? Uh, nag- Pagka nakakita, pag titignan natin sa sunglasses, meron sa akin nakikita ang light. Pero hindi naman dumalabas yung light doon mismo sa sunglasses. So, parang ganito rin yung nangyari sa anti-reflection coating. Next. Maybe some of you will ask, what if just let the light strikes the silicon junction without any more barriers on top? Next. The silicon is being a semiconductor is a bit shiny. So, alam natin, shiny. So, magkakaroon siya ng loss about 30% of sun energy due to reflection agad. Next. Now, look, here's the question. What's the main thing that is happening inside a solar cell or a photovoltaic cell that is why it is able to produce electricity when sunlight strikes? Let us first define what photovoltaic effect is. The photovoltaic effect is the generation of voltage and electric current in material upon exposure to light. It is a physical and chemical phenomenon. So yung photovoltaic effect daw is yung generation of voltage and electric current uh, upon exposure to light. So yung mga generation daw ng mga voltage natin electricity electric current, ganun, in presence of light. Next. Achieve photovoltaic effect. We need a material which, when struck by sunlight, will exhibit some characteristics of conductor. So, here's the question. What is the inside of copper conductor when there is no presence of voltage across it? So, next. So, here's the uh, answer, its valence electron is free to move, transferring from one atom to another in random. So yung extra daw na 
electron or valence electron is free to move na. Kahit saan siya magpunta is pwede kasi in run, ano, wala siyang kasama. Next. That particular characteristic of conductor were the area the where there are your number of electrons that moves really is what should be attained exhibit photovoltaic effect. So, kailangan daw mas marami ano, gumagalaw para magkaroon ng photovoltaic effect. So, this is where the silicon semiconductor comes into play. When the silicon semiconductor absorbs energy from the sun, the photons which the sunlight have could knock an electron out of its orbit within an atom. So, pagka tinatamaan daw ng photons, yung isang, ano, yung isang electron, tinata, ano, or parang tinutulak niya palabas from one atom to another. Make it free, making it free to move within the system in random. It's... So here, the lattice structure of a silicon atom forming a covalent bond with four neighboring atoms. So since the silicon daw is meron lang siyang four na ano, four na uh, electrons kinukompleto daw nila isa isa pagka nagdidikit sila. Yan. Next. So ito yung mga Another thing that is needed to achieve by silicon semiconductor is for it to exhibit the characteristic of a battery where there is an imbalance of charge in both sides. Therefore, two sides should be created. The so-called PN PN junction, making the two sides of the junction positively charged and negatively charged. Pure silicon is not enough to achieve this. This is achieved. This achieved semiconductor for the purpose of modifying its electrical conductivity. Next. Michael, So here's now another question. What substance should be used as dopant for the silicon to become neg negatively charged? The other one is anaman, about positively charged. Next. So, yun yung periodic table lang. Uh, next. So, on the N-type side, phosphorus is being used as doping material while on the P-type side, it's boron. So, pag doping, parang nag-introduce siya ng ibang, ano, ng ibang substance para mas ma-modify lang yung, yung tulad dyan, yung sa may electrical niya o para maging negative or positive. Next. Another question now is why phosphorus is the one being in used as dopant to create N type side and boron to create the P type side. The answer the silicon should be doped with atoms which contain more electrons to create negatively charged silicon or with atoms which contain less electron to create positively charged silicon. Lattice, lattice structure of silicon with phosphorus as dopants. Yeah, so, iba, yan, oh, sa picture na iba na yung uh, tag the structure. Phosphorus na yan sa gitna. Yan yung ginagamit. Yan lang rin yan. Yung, as ano, phosphorus yung nagamit. So yun, sa N-type, you know, extra electron na negative charge. Doon naman sa may P-type naman, may missing electron. Parang ano, ayun o. No? Titigan mo, kulang siya ng yung uh, doon, parang pagkakonect ah, sa bilog. Yun. Positively charge naman siya. Next. The PN junction. Since there is the rush of electron from the end, side towards the P side, the charge of the two sides will be reversed, making the boron dope P side become slightly negative and the phosphorus dope and slightly positive. Uh, 
So, PN junction. Yan. Di sante ito. X. This rush of electrons will quickly form a barrier between the two sides called depletion region. Yun, pag parang ano siya, nag-crash na nga. Parang nagkakaroon sa gitna ng yun tiyatawag natin depletion region. In here, equilibrium is being reached. So, walang, hindi siya positive, hindi siya negative. Exacto lang. Equilibrium lang. Then, electrons stop flowing. An electric field is definitely created. The silicon junction is now exhibiting a characteristics of a battery. Yan, yan lang yung nangyayari. Okay, next. Yan yung parang depletion chart. Yan, no? Okay, next. Sunlight enters the N-type side then penetrates the depletion region. This process knocks on electron out of the bond as many as it can, creating a pair of free electron and host in the depletion region. The electric field drives the pair out of the de depletion region. The free electron goes into the N-type side and the holes in the P-type side, resulting in higher concentration both. Yan. Yan yung nangyayari lang. PN. When loads are being connected to both sides, electron from the N-type side begins to flow, recombining with holes towards the P-type side. So, nag-combine. Na parang na, ano lang, tawag doon. Na re-repair. We all know that this, this undirectional flow of electron is a direct current. Yan, yung heavily doped and lightly doped. Okay. okay, ito naman yung sa may photovoltaic na kung paano rin siya nag-work. So, so, paano nga ba nag-work yun? Siyempre, yung solar modules, nireceive yung sunlight. Then, niya-transfer yung electricity sa isang inverter. Then, it, it inverts niya this to AC. Then, niya-transfer niya yun to, ano, Uh, yung tag doon yung electricity, itatransfer niya sa service panel then to the AC utility meter, then to the voltage step up para parang mas malakas and then to the utility, utility grid. Okay, next. Ayan. How, how do PV power plant work? Step up transformer are required to boost the 480 to 690 volts inverters output voltage yun nga, pinapalakas nga to the 13.8 kilovolts to 48 kilovolts at of the medium voltage utility network. It is then connected to a substation for distribution into the residential area. Yung pinakadulo kanina. Pag napunta na siya doon, dadali na siya sa mga residential area sa mga bahay-bahay. When installed at a site, solar modules are wired together in series to form strings. Strings of modules are connected in parallel when necessary to form an array. In a In a traditional PV plant, single centralized inverter provides the voltage inversion. So, okay na yata yung sa ano, no? Photovoltaic. Solar. Solar thermal. Yes. Solar thermal. Yes, this is the... Here you go. So, uh... Solar Thermal Systems, also called CSP. Okay, next. Yan. Solar Thermal System, also called CSP. Solar Thermal Power Plants collects energy from the sun with the use of mirrors. The collected energy is being reflected or redirected to a tube. This causes the fluid to achieve high temperatures And this specific fluid yun, no? yung fluid na yun, then transfer its heat to water which becomes a superheated steam. This steam is then used to turn, to turn turbines in a power plant and this mechanical energy is converted into electricity by a generator. Okay, next. Ayan, types of solar thermal system, parabolic trough, solar tower, linear Fresnel reflector, parabolic dish. Kaya no, despite there are several types, different types, no, yung solar thermal systems, same principle pa rin, halos same pa rin sila ng ano, kung paano, kung paano sila nag-generate, kung paano sila uh, paggawa ng electricity. 
Yan. Parabolic troughs. These troughs, also known as line focus collectors, arose on a single on a solar field and are composed of a long shaped reflector that concentrates incident sunlight on a pipe that run, runs down at the, at the middle of the trough. The collector utilizes a single axis solar tracking system to track the sun across the sky as it moves from east to west to ensure that there is always maximum solar energy incident on the mirrors. The, the receiver pipe in the center can reach temperatures upward of 400 degrees Celsius as the trough focuses sun at 30 to 100 times its normal intensity. Fine, next. Ayan, yun yung parabolic troughs. Ayan. So, ito yung nangyayari. Yun, yung mga mirrors, naka-align lang siya, naka siya or naka, parang, parang naka-curve siya para saluhin yung sunlight and then popokus siya sa isang point which is yung receiver, yung tube na yun. Nandoon yung uh, this type of liquid na mag, siya yung ano, siya yung iinit and siya yung magbibigay ng heat transfer sa tubig. Okay, next. Ayan, ito yun. Ito yung mga parang components. The central heat pipe, yung pinaka nasa gitna, doon nakapokus. The parabolic shape reflector trough, reflective coating mirror, o yun na nga yun, yung pinaka nag-reflect. Rot rotational axis para masabayan yung galaw ng sun. Fluid in, fluid out. Dahil yun nga lang, pagpasok nung this, ano, yung type of liquid na ginagamit para mapainit. Then collector supports para lang ano, nakaayos. Next. Okay, ito. Parabolic troughs basic diagram. So, dito yun, ito yun. This is ano, how it works. So, yung, di ba, naiinitan. Yun, yung malaki, yung, tagdan yung rose na yun, na puro blue. Yun yung parabolic troughs na merong, tawag doon, uh, may, yung mga, tawag doon, may mga pipes sa gitna. Di ba, nakapokus lang doon. Yung liquid doon is papainitan. Then, pupunta doon sa may, Ano, stream boiler, steam boiler, doon magayari yung uh, heat transfer. Malilipat yung init doon sa tubig para maging steam siya. Then yung steam pupunta doon sa steam turbine para paikutin yung generator. Then yung steam na yun, pag, na, pag nakadaan na doon, pupunta siya doon sa may heat exchanging condenser para maikondense, maging bumalik ulit sa pagiging tubig. Then babalik siya ulit doon sa steam boiler. Yung ano naman dyan, yung pinaka, uh, tawag doon, yung specific uh, liquid na sinasabi ko, yung type of liquid, yung, wait, uh, doon. basta doon sa may liquid na yun, umiikot lang siya. No, may initan, pupunta sa may heat exchange, lalamig, babalik ulit dun sa may parabolic trough para may initan. Okay, next. Ay, yun lang rin yan. Ito naman, is ano, kakaiba naman sa iba. Imbis na ano, merong tag doon. Ah, uh, agad. Meron na silang hot salt tank and cold salt tank. Mamaya sabihin ko kung, kung para sa anyo purpose ng salt tanks na 'yan. Okay, next. So ito yung ano, dito nangyayari yung heat exchange. Ginto nangyayari. So nainitan yung liquid na ano, na tag doon nasa gitna, nasa may pipes doon sa may parabolic trough. Papasok siya doon sa may hotter before. Papasok siya, no? Di mainit. Tapos meron sa, sa may labas na naman, may tubig na malamig. May initan, yung init, mapupunta sa may tubig. Then lalabas siya ng malamig. Yung tubig naman, papasok siya ng malamig. Since may initan siya nung liquid, lalabas siya ng mainit. Okay, next. Ayan. Ito lang rin yun, yung parang tulad ng kanina eh, sa may ano, how, ano, heat, parang nangyari heat exchange na yung dadaan nga yung heat transfer fluid, yun yung liquid na yun na sa may pipes na ililipat dun sa may mga, ano, sa may water. Okay, next. Renewable energy. O oh, yun nga, renewable energy na solar. Next. Ito na tayo yung mga ano natin, steam turbines na tato eh. Okay, next. Ayan, steam turbine nga. Compared sa mga ano, sa mga turbines ng sabi natin sa mga waves, mas iba yung 
ano mga turbines dito. Specifically ano siya, engineered para sa ano para mapaikot ng mga ano steam, hindi by water talaga, by steam. Naka-engineered siya doon. Okay, next. Yan, steam isa pang ano, tsura ng steam turbine. Ayan, yun lang kanina. Isa pa ulit na itsura ng parabolic props. Ayan, no? Opera yan yung ano, operating principle niya. Heat from the sun is being collected by special mirrors which is then reflected to the pipe. Yun nga. Yung, yung sunlight or yung init from the sun ipopocus ng parabolic props dun sa isang pipe na nagkocontain ng heat transfer fluid. Within this central pipe, a heat transfer fluid yun nga flowing inside, the heat transfer fluid inside the pipe can reach a temperature around 400 degrees Celsius as the trough focuses the sun at 32-100 times its normal intensity. This hot fluid goes to heat exchangers, yun nga, yung nagkocontain ng tubig. Where the heat is transferred to water, then yung water na yun is magiging steam. This steam then moves a turbine to a power plant generator. Yun na, pupunta na yung steam na nainit, na yung water na nainit na naging steam, pupunta na siya sa generator para paikutin yung turbines. The heat transfer fluid then keeps circulating within the system. Yun nga, pabalik-balik lang siya, may initan, pupunta sa may heat transfer, lalamig, pabalik ulit para, sa may parabolic crops para mainitan. The steam is being condensed which is to be sent back through the heat exchanger. Yun lang rin, na initan, magiging, yung tubig na initan, magiging steam pupunta sa condenser, magiging tubig ulit, then bab, ano lang, cycle lang siya. Okay, next. Ayan, heat transfer fluids. General description. In a solar thermal system, heat transfer uh, flu fluid is a liquid or a gas specifically manufactured for the purpose of transmitting heat from one system to another. Okay, next. Heat transfer, why use HTF instead of direct system in which water is instantly turned into steam by the heat reflected by mirrors in thermal thermal system or CSP? So bakit nga, yun nga, yun sabi ko nina, bakit uh, meron pang salt or merong heat transfer fluid? Pwede naman direct ang, ang iinitan yung water, magiging steam din naman yun. No? Pwede naman. Ang, ang use kasi na yan is para may store yung init. So siyempre di man natin magagamit yung solar ano solar solar thermal systems tuwing gabi. Wala namang araw noon, wala namang init noon. So sa umaga pa lang, no, umaga tang hali hapon kung saan direct yung araw, ginagamit na yung tawag doon. Yung init na kukuha doon, napupunta sa heat transfer fluids o kaya naman sa mga salt na uh, ginagamit na iba. Doon na i-store yung ibang init para yun yung magagamit tuwing gabi or pag wala na talagang ano or muulan or gabi yon doon doon na siya pwedeng gamitin next ayun no these worker plus have high heat capacity it can maintain a high level of heat for a long period of time that is why that is why in CSP a large volume of HTF is heated to an elevated temperature during daytime where sunlight is intensity is at its peak then it is stored in a tight vessel. It acts as a reserve power that can be used during cloudy days when the sun's intensity is at its lowest. So parang ano nga lang, parang nga rin, nagpaulohan to, bigla, lagay mo sa thermos. No? Para meron, pang, meron pa rin mainit, hindi mo wawala yung ano na yun. Or during night time where there is totally no presence of sunlight. Okay, next. So heat transfer fluid, the heat transfer fluids used in CSP technologies includes air, water, molten salts, glycol-based, glycerol-based synthetic oils. Okay, next. The following characteristics are being considered on what type of HDF is to be used in a solar thermal power plant. So operating temperature, life cycle, heat transfer capability, heat storage aspect, overall safety, Cast. So, you know, note the use of molten salt in parabolic crop season can heat the heat transfer fluid to 550 
So mas mataas compared sa may ano noon sa may HD na 400 uh, degrees Celsius lang. So mas ano siya, mas efficient. Okay, so next Ano na Jerome? Sige, idol. The solar tower work in principle. The setup includes an array of large number of filter controlled sun tracking mirrors known as heliostats. Sunlight can be concentrated as much as 1,500 times its normal intensity. This mirror moves in dual axis and are located at the ground level, which collects energy from the sun, then reflects it toward the receiver, which contains HTF located at the top, at the top of a tower. The HIF is being heated as around, at around 600 degrees Celsius, and just like in the parabolic trough, this HTF through pipes, it goes to a set of heat exchangers, turbine, then it transfer heat to the water, thereby generating high pressure superheated steam, which is being used to turn a steam turbine. So same lang din siya nung naunang diniscuss, which is the he, um, parabolic trots. Next. So this is the uh, solar power tower. So nakita natin yung mga heliostats field then dine direct niya into the solar receiver which is pinapaindit niya yung specific liquid doon and goes to the hot sodium storage tank pupunta sa steam generator and then a super heat super heated steam then siya yung magpapaikot sa turbine yung steam naman is pupunta sa heat rejection then yung feed water is babalik siya sa steam generator and then the cold sodium storage tank naman is manggagaling sa steam generator and bubble siya sa tower and then so on ganun lang ulit paikot-ikot lang next so this is the same pero solar power tower pa rin siya same lang din siya ito lang yung you know, pinaka layout niya yan ito yung itsura niya in real life daw yung ka Next. Next post. So linear Fresnel reflector. The general description: the design of this type of combination of parabolic trot and water and solar tower. This uses flat mirrors instead of parabolic mirrors. So the mga flat mirrors daw or yung pa pa talas na kita natin mirrors yung ginagamit instead yung instead of parabolic. These flat mirrors moves in one axis unlike the solar tower and parabolic dish, dish which move in two. So single lang daw siya kung mag-move. Uh, no. It adapts the working of a solar tower where the mirrors on the ground collect light from the sun and reflect it toward the fixed receiver located above. The previous design generates steam directly without the use of HTF which are now obsolete. LFR nowadays uses HIF to generate steam. Then the classic LFR has only one linear receiver and a single linear tower. Lower tower. To increase optical and ground use efficiency, the improved design called compact linear fresh nail reflectors use multiple receiver for each set of mirrors that is adjacent mirrors have different inclinations in order to forget different receivers next is so this is how it looks the linear personal reflector but pinakalag. so the light will bounce from the mirror then through the absorber tube or and then, meron tayong second reflector doon para makuha niya yung maximum capacity nun. Next. So the linear Fresnel reflector, the general de description, flat mirrors as used, which are cheaper. 
then the disadvantage of this design is shading effect of adjacent mirrors, which can be encountered only by utilizing more ground space, which increases cost. So yung disadvantage daw niya is yung, yung design ng shading niya ng mga adjacent mirrors since makakover niya yung iba kung mara yung naka-flat ganun. Para ma-utilize to is kailangan ng more ground space which is increasing cost. Very high temperatures are not produced as compared to a parabolic trot or a solar tower and therefore the efficiency is less. So meron daw siya less efficiency compared to parabolic trot. Next. So the linear Fresnel refractor. So ito raw, ganito raw siya mag-work. In loop 1, the heat, tran heat transfer fluid. This is, ayun, nakikita naman natin, nagtatransfer siya in motion lang siya. And then the loop 2 is the generative rock, rocking cycle. Next. So this, it, ganito raw yung magiging itsura niya ang linear Fresnel refractor. Ang situation of the sun rays into the receiver. So lahat daw ng mirrors is nag adjust siya para mapunta lang siya directly into the receiver lang. Next. So ito naman, ganito daw yung tura niya in real life. Next. So ito, same lang din. Nakita natin yung reflections ng sunlight is nadadirectly ano, towards the receiver. Next. The parabolic dish, description and operating principle. This consists of set of flat mirrors combined to form a large parabolic dishes that attach to a motor sensor which tracks the movement of the sun in dual axis. The collected energy from the sun is being concentrated into the PCU located at the focal point of the dish. So ito naman, yung parabolic dish naman daw siya, is flat mirror siya na naka-attach uh, um, naka into, uh, naka-attach para makabuo ng isang mukhang parabolic uh, mirror. Then, the PCU consists mainly of thermal receiver and sterling engine. The thermal receiver which is a heat exchanger transfer heat to the sterling engine causing it to re reciprocate reciprocating movement causes the rotation of the engine of an electric generator so these dishes can be concentrated sunlight much better than parabolic rods and that we run through them huh? we run through them the temperature upwards of 750 degrees Celsius because of the limitation of the size and the small quantity of fluid. Parabolic dish collectors, collection, well, collectors are suitable for small scale power generators. Next. Next is the Sterling engine. So, description operating principle Sterling engines can be hard to understand. So here are some key points. Every Stirling engine has a sealed cylinder with one part hot and other cold. So masabi niya parang same lang din siya ng kangina. The working gas inside the engine, which of the air, helium, or hydrogen, is moved by, the, by, moved by a mechanism from the hot side to the cold side. When the gas is on the hot side, it expands and pushes up on a piston. So, pagka mainit daw yung gas, at nasa, ayun, pagka nasa hot side daw yung gas, pinutulak, uh, nage-expand daw niya and pinupush niya yung piston. And when it, it moves back to the cold side, it contracts. Pagka nasa malamig daban daw, is lumiliit. Next. Parabolic dish. So, here are the parts of parabolic dish. The key. So nakita natin, one is the concentrator bowl or yung mainly nandun yung mga mirrors. Then second, yung supporter lang ng power conversion unit or the PCU. Ayan, nakita natin. Then four is the elevation drive guide. So yung guide daw na 
paano para sa uh, agro elevation para ma lak ngayon san then the azimuth drive guide so yun naman yun lagi spend sa mismong parabolic dish then next is the foundation which is yung tinatayo ng buong dish then the electrical cabinet or dito ron naglagay yung mga electric then the pedestal so support lang din siya then the the annual annular mounting structure next is the elevation bearing next so in sterling engine ang ito natin dito ito isa heat source daw is ina-expand niya tinutulak niya yung piston through that ano from the displacer piston tinutulak niya papunta sa power piston and then yung cooling pins naman daw is doon siya pinapalamay kinocontract niya para mabalik yung displacer piston then itutulak niya through crankshaft may tutulak niya yung flywheel and then doon siya mag-generate next the quarza za te solar power station so ito itsura niya mainly flat mirror siya then next so this is the quarza za te solar power station ito natin is consist ng mga uh, flat mirrors and mayroon siyang single tower dun sa gitna which is ni refer nila yung mga sunlight towards that the next So here on the electrical capacity. So in Quasar the solar power it generates 510 megawatts in more uh, located siya in Morocco. And then the Vana solar power facility generates 392 which is located in USA. Then the solar energy generating systems generates 310 located also on USA. And then the Moraves solar project in USA which generates a total of 280 megawatts. Next. So, continuation, the Solana generating station in USA generates 280 also. And the Genesis solar energy project, same 280 and same in USA. Then the solar and solar power station in Spain generates at two at two hundred megawatts. Then the Solnova solar power station in Spain also generates one hundred and fifty megawatts. Same as at the and the Sol solar power station in Spain, which generates one hundred and fifty. And then the extra extra sol solar power station in Spain also generates also. 150 megawatts. Next. Ada tak guys yang mesti? 